Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today here at Rethink Life Church. Hey, we're honored that you've joined with us, and I'm gathered with some of our team today. And We would love just to say a warm welcome to all of you. So team, give those that are watching a round of applause. Hey, we appreciate you being a part of our series that we are super excited about. In fact, we're calling it the Songs of Christmas, and this is week two. And uh, I just really want to just let you know that for me on a personal level, I love Christmas and I love the fact that during this season, we have a lot of really just great opportunities to sing because the great joy that we have in Jesus Christ gives us even more motivation to sing during this Christmas season. In fact, one of the things that I want to do for just a moment is I just want to begin by asking you a question. Now, I'm curious, and I want you to work with me, okay? So I want you to type in your response there in the chat section if you're watching this, Facebook, or maybe if you're on our online uh, platform. Here's what I want to ask you. What would you consider to be the most joyful time of the year? Okay, come on, let me see you light it up. Go ahead and put whatever you think is the most joyful time of year for you personally. Now, I would be safe to say, as you're typing in your response, okay, I would be safe to say, like most, Christmas is often associated as the most joyful time of the year. Now, granted, 2020 probably has not been the most joyful calendar year, you know, that we can perhaps maybe associate as an exciting year. Obviously, this has been a very unusual year. But even in the midst of all the things that we've encountered in 2020, I promise you there are still things that we can find joy in and there are things that we can truly celebrate in. And that's the reason why I'm excited about this particular um, message that I'm going to be giving you today. Because, you know, unfortunately, there's been a lot of things that have been canceled this year and our whole canceled culture, you know, uh, mindset and, 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 and culture in which we're living in today. I'm sure there are some who just want to cancel Christmas. But I'm here to tell you, at Rethink Life Church, we're not canceling Christmas. You can't, listen, you can't take Christ out of Christmas. He is the reason for the season. And so with that in mind, here's what, I want to, here's what I want to share with you. In fact, in 1719, there was a man by the name of Isaac Watts. Now, he may be a familiar name to some if you maybe have grown up in church and maybe you can remember singing the old classic hymns because that's who Isaac Watts was. He was not only a theologian, but he was considered to be one of the greatest hymn writers and songwriters of all time. And he's written tremendous amounts of, in fact, many volumes of some of the greatest hymns, those classic hymns that many of us grew up singing in church. But what's interesting is that Isaac Watts actually was known for a song that he wrote that was actually taken from Psalm 98, and it's called Joy to the World. Now, we all perhaps have sung that song countless times growing up. You know, we've all sung it in church. It's, it's something that we hear, you know, on the radio or, you know, maybe we have it on our playlist, you know, with, with our favorite, you know, list of songs that we always enjoy singing along with. But what's interesting about this particular song known as Joy to the World is that it really doesn't have much to do with Christmas. As a matter of fact, when Isaac Watts actually penned the words when he wrote the lyrics of this song, he actually did not write the song with the intention of it being a Christmas song. And the reason why is because since he really wrote the song out of Psalm 98, along with some of the other verses of scriptures that he collaborated with, what's interesting is he was actually writing about the second coming of Jesus Christ as opposed to the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, one of the things that you'll notice is this. One of the things you'll notice is that in that particular song, the lyrics, actually, you, you, you will only see one phrase, and it's the phrase, the Lord has come. And what's interesting is that there's no mention of Mary or Joseph. There's no mention of the wise men or the shepherds or the angels. It is simply the phrase, the Lord 
has come. Let earth receive her king. And because of that statement, again, Isaac Watts was actually referring to the second coming, which we all know has not actually happened yet. But once again, because of popular culture here in America, we embrace that song because there are so many things about the song that actually relates to the spirit of Christmas in which we all not only identify with, but we've all embraced and adopted that's become synonymous with Christmas. And so because Joy to the World is one of our favorite classic Christmas songs here in America, what we want to do is we want to share with you our very own version of the song known as Joy to the World. Let's listen to this song. I trust you enjoyed that song. It truly is an amazing song that we all love to sing, and it's one that I think we need now more than ever. Yeah. And the reason why is because obviously the world needs a lot of joy in this moment. And I love the fact that, you know, when you think about it, joy to the world, everybody, the entire world needs true joy in their life. And I think when you think about Joy being for everybody, I think that's one of the reasons why God sent the angel to the shepherds there on that star-filled night when they were just doing what shepherds did. They were just hanging out on the hillside you know, watching their, their flock of sheep, and I'm sure they were just kind of kicking back and, you know, sipping on a little, you know, I don't know, a little Bethlehem brew or something like that. And they were just kind of taking it all in, you know, when, when all of a sudden this dazzling light show appeared before them, when an angel of the Lord appeared before them. And we know the story, perhaps if you've read the classic passage of scripture in Luke chapter two, that we often read at 
at, at, in our own family on Christmas Eve. It's found in Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. And I'm just going to pick it up here in verse 8 where it says, That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. And then suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. I mean, I think we would all be terrified if we saw that as we were just tending to our flock of sheep. But the angel reassured them, and the angel said, Don't be afraid. I bring you good news, and that good news will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. So what I want to do for a few moments is I want to talk to you about this joy for all people. I want to share with you how you can experience joy in your life, even in a season, even in a calendar year of 2020 with COVID-19 and everything that we've had to endure this year, I truly believe that we can still find joy in our lives. And there are three ways that we can truly experience that. And the first is this, and I encourage you, if you have something that you can jot down these notes uh, with, you can also get those notes by uh, downloading our app. And uh, we want to do everything we can to resource you in that way. But the first is this, and that is joy is found in a person. That's right. His name is Jesus. You see, our joy actually has a source attached to it. And here's what Psalm 43 verse 4 says. I love this. There I will go to the altar of God, to God, the source of my joy, the psalmist writes. And I just want to share with you, and I, and I, need, a little, I need a little love here, okay? I need you to support me in this because of all the Hebrew names that, that we often use for God as it relates to help us really understand all the different attributes and characteristics of God. It is pronounced El Shemshef Gali. M Shemshef Gali. And here's what it means it simply means the God of exceeding joy. This simply means, hey, we serve a God who is a God of exceeding joy. And I don't know what maybe your joy level is right now, but I'm here to tell you when you encounter God, when you have a moment in your own heart where you put your faith and your trust in His Son, Jesus Christ, who is the source of all joy, I'm telling you, it will exceed your highest expectations because you're no longer looking to other things or people for that source of joy or happiness. Instead, you're looking to the one who has saved you and forgiven you, who has redeemed you and given you a life that's worth living for. And so with that, listen, if you find yourself in an unhappy place right now, and I would be safe to say there are some of you that are watching this. And this is not the best of times for you. I mean, if we were just really to be take off the, the coronavirus mask here, you know what I'm saying? If we were just to get real and honest and transparent, there are some of you right now that are not in a good place, if you will. You're not maybe at the most joyful or maybe the happiest season in your life because there are unfortunate things that have happened. There have been some setbacks in your life. And I just want to ask you a question right now. And I want you to think long and hard about this. And I would encourage you once again to maybe, maybe put this in the chat. I want to hear from you, and that is this. What would make you happy right now? Now think about that. That's a huge question. If things aren't going so well, well right now, and, 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 and you were to confess that you're not at a good place, that, that maybe you, you have not maybe found joy or happiness, my question is, what would make you happy? And, you know, I would be safe to say that for some of us, you know, and, and, and maybe if, if you're at that place where you're not really happy or there's not a lot to be joyful about, but yet you were to say, well, this is what, 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 this is what would make me happy, it's probably attached to some kind of circumstance. 
In other words, in your mind, you're thinking, well, you know, if you put the question that way, I mean, if, if this happened or that happened, yeah, that would bring happiness to my life. And so your situation might be, well, you know, yeah, I mean, if, if, if the ultimate dream job were to be opened up for me, yeah, that would make me happy. Or, you know, if a loved one who's been fighting illness, who's been sick, and maybe who is, you know, diagnosed with the, the coronavirus, I mean, if that, if my loved one was suddenly healed and, and they were restored back to health, then yes, that would bring great happiness and joy to my life. Or for some of you, you would say, you know, if, if that vision that I've always longed for suddenly was realized and fulfilled, yes, that would make me happy. But here's the thing. What if those things didn't actually happen? What if that person whom you've been praying for doesn't get healed? What, is, what if the door is slammed shut on that so-called dream job or the, maybe the opportunity you were hoping was going to present itself? What would happen if that dream that you've carried in your heart for so many years didn't actually happen? Those are huge. And you know, for some of you, and rightfully so, the, the desires that you have in your heart are genuine, they're real, they're, they're sincere. But let me share something with you. And I think this is so important. Because in James chapter 1, verse 2, it says, When it seems as though you are facing nothing but difficulties, see it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. Now, I'll be honest with you. When I read that verse of Scripture, that just messes me up. It just kind of, I don't know, it messes with my mind. And the reason why is because I'm thinking, how in the world could the writer, James, make that kind of statement? It doesn't even make sense. I mean, when I'm going through hardships and trials and difficulties, how am I supposed to find exceeding joy in all of that? I mean, when life, honestly, is a bummer, how am I supposed to find exceeding joy in that? And I think those are honest questions for us to honestly ask because, you know, when you think about it, I believe when James made that statement, I think he was also reminding us that the reason why we can find exceeding joy when difficulties come our ways is because even in the midst of our trials, God can turn our trials into a testimony. Even in the midst of deep pain in our life, we can still find purpose in our pain. And when you think about it, listen, God never wastes a hurt. And so God can even take, even what the devil meant for evil, and God can still turn it around for the greater good. God truly causes all things to work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. So I'm telling you, yeah, there may be difficulties and hardships and trials and challenges that the enemy wants to use to rob us from that joy. But as long as we keep our perspective, as long as we are placing our joy, not in circumstances, not in other people, but we are looking to the source of our joy, which is our relationship with Jesus Christ, and we're putting our dependence and our trust upon Him and Him alone, that is when we can replace the challenges and the weariness of our world today, and we can replace it with that exceeding joy that James is talking about. Because, listen, happiness is not an emotion you feel it is the decision that you make. And I think that's so important. You see, happiness, by its very definition, still leaves us feeling empty. You see, the word happiness comes from a Latin word, which actually is pronounced hap, which simply means by chance. Therefore, happiness is based on happenings or based on circumstances. So therefore, if life is good, then yeah, we're going to be happy. But what if life isn't so good? Does that mean we're no longer going to find happiness in life? I love what Rick Warren once said. He said, you know, I used to think that, that life kind of consisted of hills and valleys. You know, there are good times and there are bad times. But he said, in reality, it's kind of like two rails on a railroad there's something good and there's something bad going on all the time. And I believe that's true. 
Because, you know, in one breath, there's something we can find great fulfillment and joy and excitement from, but yet by the end of the day, there's something that can bring bad news into our life. And so if we're always living by the highs and the lows and the circumstances and, and all of the things that honestly are beyond our control, if we're allowing the external things to dictate our joy and our happiness, then I promise you we're never going to be happy. That's the reason why joy is not based on the outside or circumstances. It's based on the inside. Joy is an inside job. You see, that's why joy comes from within. It comes from a relationship. Joy is relational, not circumstantial. And that's why Jesus said in John 15, verse 11, he said, I've told you these things so that you may be filled with my joy, not the, listen, not the things of this world. No, he said, so you can be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. So again, the question is, who or what are you placing your sense of happiness or joy in? I love what Romans chapter 15, verse 13 says. And it says these words, Paul said, I pray that God the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in Him. Then you will overflow with, listen to this, with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. So the reason why we can find joy even in difficult times, even in a year known as the year of the coronavirus, 2020, Listen, the reason why we can sing joy to the world, the reason why we can sing that is because we understand where our true source of joy comes from. And we can live with confident hope, knowing that our trust and our dependency is upon Jesus, the source of our joy, not in the external circumstances of life that honestly we cannot control. So the first key when it comes to applying the truth of this, of this powerful song, the subject of joy to our lives is understanding where the source of joy comes from. And joy is found in a person, and his name is Jesus. Number two is this, and that is joy is found in giving to others. I love that. Joy is found in giving to others. We have a core value. We have seven core values here in our, at our church. And one of our core values goes by this phrase, generosity is our way. In other words, that's just what we want to be known for. We see generosity as something that, that we don't, you know, we don't, we don't look at generosity as something we have to do. We see generosity as something we actually get to do. It's just who we are. And so with that, I think it's important that we understand how powerful generosity is when we have a spirit of giving, how in return that can bring so much joy and fulfillment to our lives. I think it's one of the reasons why Jesus even said, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Because you see, the real joy is not in getting or receiving, it's really in giving. And it's one of the reasons why we're doing something called Operation Joy this Christmas. As a matter of fact, one of the things that we're doing is we are, uh, we're actually going to be partnering with our local high school here in our community called Lake Nona High School, and we're going to be helping restock their food pantry because so many families and their kids have fallen on difficult times, and, and they shared with us, believe it or not, our food pantry is barren. And so as a church family, we're collecting um, non-perishable food items, and, we're, you know, and on December the 19th, we're going to be helping restock. We're collecting food items, and if you want to help us with that, go to RethinkLife.com, and we have a list of non-perishable food items that you can actually donate and bring with you and drop off on December the 19th. As a matter of fact, we're not only doing that, but we're also giving away what we call bikes and Bibles. In other words, we're giving free bicycles away, and we're giving God's Word away. We're going to Give them to under-resourced children in our community. And what an exciting opportunity. I'm here to tell you, when we see the smiles break out on the faces of those children, and, and we see, listen, the joy 
that radiates from the moms and the dads who see their children receiving those gifts. Let me tell you something. Man, that brings great joy to your heart because you understand that, listen, you are blessing someone else. You're giving someone else hope. You're giving someone else life. You're giving them something, honestly, that, listen, is, is beyond just the material aspect, but you're giving them the hope that, listen, God loves them, God is for them, and God is going to take care of them. And I think that's so vitally important. As a matter of fact, I would invite you, if you live in the Lake Nona community, okay, and if you're watching this right now, that means you got time, okay, to get in your car and go to one of my favorite restaurants in, in the community called Lake Nona. Okay, I'm giving a little, giving them a little shout out here. They're called Belay. Okay, if you've ever eaten bole, then listen, you know that's a healthy place to eat. They're all about, you know, clean eating, you know what I'm saying? And so, man, come join us today from 12 to 2, okay? Bring some non-perishable food items with you and eat as much as you can. And here's the reason why. Because 10% of the proceeds that we receive from all of the meals that day at Bole are going to actually be given to our Operation Joy Outreach. And so, man, when we do our part and we are just joyful in our generosity, man, we get to meet needs, we get to help change lives, and we get to see God work in the hearts and in the lives of other people. So listen, whatever you do, you're going to understand in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24 and 25, you got to understand this principle. The world of the generous gets larger and larger, but the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. The one who blesses others, listen, is abundantly blessed. Those who help others, notice, are helped. I really believe that when we worry about our past and we're fearful about our future, it destroys the joy in our present. And so when you think about it, there is nothing that will rob you of your joy than when you start focusing on yourself and you start focusing on your past and you allow the worry and the stress and the anxiety of the unknowns that can wreck us with fear about our future. I'm here to tell you, you only think about one thing and it's yourself. So we have to take the focus off of you know, what, what is not working in our life. We have to take the focus off of what we can't control. We have to take the focus off of, you know, all the should'ves and the could'ves and all the what-ifs. We have to take the focus off of all of that and put it back, listen, where our true source of joy yeah. comes from, and that's Jesus. Amen. And when we shift our perspective, we stop thinking about ourselves and we stop thinking about what we don't have, and we start focusing on what we do have, it's amazing how it does change our outlook. It changes how we see things. So therefore, we're not focusing on the little that we don't have. No, what we do is we have the mindset of, okay, well, I'm going to take the little out of the not very much, and I'm going to give it to God yeah. so that He can take my not very much he can take my little and he can turn it into more than enough. And so here's the thing. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 and 2, I love the story about a group of people known as the Macedonians who didn't have much. They had very little. And therefore, they actually ended up experiencing something that I think is so important for us to learn. And here's what Paul said. He said, beloved ones, we must tell you about the grace God poured out upon the church of Macedonia. For even during a season of severe difficulty, hello, can anybody relate to that? Man, so many people have been experiencing a season of severe difficulty and tremendous suffering. That's what they were encountering. They became even more filled with joy. Come on, somebody. They were filled with joy even in a season of tremendous difficulty and suffering in their life. And then it says, from the depths of their extreme poverty, super abundant joy overflowed into an act of extravagant generosity. So again, their mindset and their motto was, no, this is just who we are. 
This is how we roll. Generosity is not just something we do. It's who we are. And it's the reason why even in their little, they were experiencing much. Why? Because they understood what it meant to experience the grace of God. And because of the grace of God that they experienced in their lives because of what God had done for them, they couldn't help but want to share that with other people. No wonder they had this amazing joy that overflowed out of their lives because they weren't focusing on themselves. They weren't focusing on what they didn't have. They just focused on what they did have and they were going to be able to use that in order to meet the needs of other people. Man, what an opportunity for us as a church. What an opportunity for you as an individual, maybe even in your own family, to take the focus off the external, to take the focus off the the presence and the gifts and what's under the tree and to take the focus off off of what we're not going to have this Christmas and just say, okay, what can we actually do to bless other people? What What is it that we have that we could give to someone else? How could we bring joy to somebody else? And so when you think about joy, yeah, we can sing joy to the world because the world desperately needs something to be joyful about. And when we come alongside and we're able to speak life and to speak hope and to give them joy through what it means to know Jesus, I'm telling you, there's nothing that brings you greater joy and fulfillment in return. Which leads me to the third thing, and that is joy is found in sharing the good news. I love what that angel did to those shepherds on that star-filled night. Yes, on that birth announcement, that big night, it was kind of like joy alert. Why? Because these angels were singing. They were singing that song that, you know, that, that just filled the, the night sky, you know, peace on earth and goodwill toward men. There was a moment where these shepherds encountered a joyful sound. And here's the thing. The angel said there in verse 10 in Luke chapter 2, he said that the angel said, don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. I love that. The greatest news the world has ever known is that God came to earth in the form of his son, Jesus Christ, who came to this world, who lived a sinless life, who ultimately died on a cross for your sins and for mine, was placed into a tomb, and three days later, he came back to life so that we could know forgiveness, so that we could have salvation, so that we could be restored and redeemed, so that we could be put back into the ultimate plan and purpose that God had created us to fulfill. And not only to live a life of purpose in this life, but to live forever in a home that Jesus is preparing for us. Man, if that doesn't get you jacked up with some joy, I don't know what will. That's good news, everybody. Man, that is good news that Jesus is alive and he wants to live inside of you. I'm gonna share with you as we conclude this interesting fact. Did you know on December the 21st, just in a few days from now, December the 21st, by the calendar year is always known as the winter solstice. Now, what's interesting is that it's the longest night of the calendar year and it's the shortest day of the year as far as daylight is concerned. And it's so interesting to me that even in the darkest time or season of the year, listen to this, Christmas just has a way of shining a bright light to a world that's living in darkness. And I just believe, listen, God wants you and he wants me, if we know him as our Lord and Savior, he wants us to share that good news. He wants us to take that light. What did Jesus say? Don't hide your light under a bushel. No, no. he said, put it out on a stand so that your husband can see, your wife can see, your kids can see, your coworkers can see, your classmates can see. Listen, your next door neighbors can see so that the whole world will see that, listen, the light that we are all talking about 
is that actually a person and his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. That light leads us. It leads us to the place that God has destined for us. And so it's the reason why we need to invite people to church. It's the reason why we need to invite people into our lives so that we can share with them the good news that is found in Jesus Christ. You know, there's only one thing that happens in heaven when someone prays and gives their life to Jesus Christ. According to Luke 15, 7, you know what it is? It means joy. In other words, there is joy that busts out in heaven when one person prays and invites Jesus into their lives. It says there is more joy in heaven over one sinner that repents than over 99 others that need no repentance. In other words, listen, when somebody crosses over that line of faith and puts their faith and their trust in the person of Jesus Christ, all of heaven is rejoicing. Yeah. So what I want to share with you today is this. The next time you hear the song, and I hope you'll download the song and you'll listen to the song that our team actually has recorded. We have four songs that we're rolling out. We're so excited about with the songs of Christmas. So when you hear these songs, let them be a reminder to you, especially on this song, since we're talking about joy and joy to the world. Listen, let it be a reminder that joy is found in a person. That joy is found when we give to other people and joy is found when we share the good news that people so desperately need. Would you do me a favor? Would you bow your heads in a moment of prayer with me? And wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whatever you're doing, can I just ask you just to push pause for just a moment? And I want to just ask you once again the question, and that is, what is it that would make you happy? You know, have you found yourself looking to other things or other people for that source of happiness in your life? Well, can I just once again remind you, I think if you peel it a little, uh, peel it back and you go a little deeper, I think you'll realize that maybe what's missing, why you maybe feel empty, is because happiness is not found in circumstances. It's really found in a person, and his name is Jesus. And I want to invite you today to place your faith in Jesus, to allow him to be the Lord of your life, to allow him to make your joy complete. I promise you, he can meet needs in your life that only he can meet. And he wants to come close to you. The Bible says when we come close to him, he comes close to us. And so right there where you are, you can pray and you can invite Jesus right now to be your Lord and your Savior. And you may be a Christian and maybe You've drifted and it's time to come back. But if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, pray this prayer in your heart after me. Just say, Dear God, I confess to you that I am a sinner. And today, by faith, I invite you into my life to forgive me and to save me. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Hey, if you just prayed that prayer just then, Hey, I want you to know you just made life's greatest decision. And would you do me a huge favor right now, right now? Would you just simply, if you, if you maybe if you have your phone, you can text the words, I decided. You can type, type that up in the little chat there, I decided. We have a little booklet that we want to give to you. And we'll send it to you. It's just a PDF and it will help you get started in your new life in Jesus Christ. Team, can we give those that just made life's greatest decision a round of applause and celebrate with the angels in heaven that are rejoicing because of you praying and making Jesus the Lord of your life. Listen, we got a lot to sing about. So the next time you hear that song, Joy to the World, let it be known that the, listen, that it is for all people. Then the good news of Jesus is for all people. And let's be about sharing that good news and sharing that joy with those who desperately need it. We love you guys. We can't wait to see you next weekend as we continue with our series. And we're going to be sharing in more detail all the different opportunities you and your family get to experience with us this Christmas as we have an amazing Christmas Eve experience that all of us and Christmas services that all of us are going to have the opportunity to take part in. We love you guys. We'll see you next Sunday.